What is up, everybody? Welcome into the Creed of Crypto podcast. I am Broke Boy Crypto, and I have here with me, as always, my co-pilot, Crypto Ewok. We have a great show for you guys tonight. Chiefly, we are going to discuss, as you can see on the thumbnail, is this your final chance to get these bargain barrel basement prices for the Pulse Chain ecosystem. We've talked about October a lot. Some people are feeling Rectober so far. Hey, it's October 11th. We got a long way to go. There's a lot going on in markets and in the world, of course, right now, which we're going to get to all angles of this evening. But that's going to be the main question is, hey, we're now officially in Q4 of 2023 before the year of the Bitcoin happening. So how much time do we have left. We're going to get into all of that and more. Shout out to everybody in the chat tonight. We got Tan Cups. We got Daddy Hexler. We got uh, all the other names are gone off my screen now. DJ Moonboy, of course, as always. So welcome in, everybody. Smash the like on your way in and uh, hit us up with comments, questions. We want to hear from you guys tonight as well. Uh, Ewok, how are you feeling this evening? What do you feel about the markets and uh, everything going on? It's a, it's a crazy time for sure. Yeah, I've been a little crazy. Uh, lots going on in the world, but uh, all in all, I think it's, uh, I hate to say it, I think it's bullish. <laughs> uh, things are going to be looking up here, I've, and the sentiment is is starting to flow across the, the Twitterverse, the Xverse, I should say. Right. Um, starting to feel a lot of sentiment, and you know what happens when you get a couple green candles, it uh, propels everybody to, to kind of try and get in on what they've been forgetting about. So that's right. Back. Yeah. You, you get a couple green candles, then you get a couple more and a couple more after that. So um, yeah, for sure. And I, I am in agreement with you and where I think the market's going to be heading here. Let's actually take a look real quick right now at BTC and ETH. We'll see kind of where we are price wise with everything. So there has been a dip really over the last couple of days, nothing dramatic uh necessarily but bitcoin sitting at 26.8k right now we have eth at 1567 uh looking at the pulse chain ecosystem so we have had a drop down over the last couple of days but uh looks like maybe we've hit the 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 bottom of that little drop and still it hasn't been anywhere near a full retracement to where the lows had previously been um basically we have pulse sitting at four zeros and a four one pulse x we have at four zeros and uh 1085 it's kind of hovered right around there Hex on a pulse chain is down to that seven tenths, seven and a half tenths of a penny. And uh, eHex has really struggled on this dip. It's down just a touch below or right at that. I mean, it's right in that same range of three tenths of a penny, basically. But um, we've seen this dip over the last few days. And, it, you know, it sucks so much. We might as well just start there as far as price performance, eWalk. Um, somebody commented this on one of our videos the other day, and I thought the same thing. It was on Friday because I was watching it as well. We had been pumping, if you can remember this far back, um, you know, at the end of the week last week. And right when Pulse got to that four zeros and a four eight, one of those key levels that we're seeing if it can blast through and get back up over that 50% off discount from the sack rate, it just got bitch slapped basically back down from yeah. there and people started selling again. Now we're, we've still, you know, hung out in the same channel. It's not like a whole new pattern developed or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just that very, very clear resistance. Um, I bought a nice bag of P hex, uh, actual hex, um, on Friday, right at that, uh, uh, eight and a half, 10, basically another, tenth of a penny than where we are right now uh because i thought we were maybe going to smash through because you know we we have been talking about like this is the the liftoff coming here and i thought that was going to be it uh took one on the chin a little bit in the very very short term whatever it's like a 12 percent dip but anyway uh and i staked it out too so whatever but um yeah what do you think about this like we're, we still have resistance at that level how many more times are we going to go up and touch it and is it going to be even you know further resistance do you think or are we going to smash through that level here well it depends. Uh, it depends on how many sellers that are just anxious to get out. You know, as we noticed, I think one of the the big the big sell the other day uh, was was from one or two wallets. Um, I'm not mm -hmm. seeing it on this chart for some reason, but either way, what? Yeah, one of the big sells was was from one big wallet. They dumped several billion in in one shot, and it got eaten up pretty good. Um, you know, it didn't drop too far, surprisingly. But it's that time of year. Uh, like I said, you know, you're unfortunately now's the time you want to be DCAing, but you could potentially 
you know, be somebody's exit liquidity because they just, they want out. Um, so until we wash some of these guys out or get enough big buyers where they say, oh, hang on, I may, may not want to sell quite yet. Um, that's kind of the, the breaking point that we're waiting for. So we're, we're getting there. It's close. Um, but, you know, it's going to chop around like this for another month or two, hopefully two steps forward, maybe one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And before you know it, it'll slowly stair step and people will get left behind and be like, oh, shit, I wish I would have bought whenever it was whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's kind of where we're at. And it's going to be kind of boring here for a little bit, but DCA, DCA, DCA. Yeah, and in terms of the the liquidated thing, I mean, it's really on such a short time frame anyway. Like I said, I mean, I bought right, basically right at that key level where I thought we were about to blash through, and then it came back down a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, as long as we stay kind of in this channel and over pulse at um, the quad zeros and a four, I mean, we, that is a move up from where we had been previously. The all-time low was the uh, four zeros and a three three or something. But you can see just looking at the chart right there. I mean, we have constantly um, since I, I can't see the date there. Like, yeah, basically mid-September or right at the beginning of September. We've kind of just had stair steps here and you can see yep. it. Um, and now we've got a green candle. Yep. That's the daily. It's slow and it's, it's yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. this is the daily, and you know this back here was that day you were talking about where, um, yep. you know, it was September or August twenty sixth, and from there, you know, you go up a little bit and you pull back, but it's a little bit yeah. higher, and you go up a little bit and you pull back and a little bit higher. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, you keep seeing these slightly higher lows and um, slowly the, the little bit of higher highs, and like I said, before you know it, you're up to point zero zero five, and then and then you're taken off again and maybe pull back to this level in here the four five four six area and, and it goes up again so yeah it's part of the part of the cycle that we're going to see but again you're you know you, you always run the risk of catching one of those um where it pumps up a little bit right before it pulls back and you end up being somebody's exit liquidity you know don't forget there's traders out there too there's new products out there that are you know, by buying your shorts and, and placing longs and shorts and, you know, so pulling X or uh, pulling um, liquidity for some buys and they'll put it back in to, to firm it up a little bit. There's a lot of people playing games. So you got to be aware of that as well. Yeah, um, that chart is looking pretty good, though. I mean, that's stair stepping up we've seen since the 26th, like you said. And, and again, Ewok, we mentioned this last week, but I mean, that, you know, when you zoom out even further on that, you obviously see the huge red candle on July 31st. Um, there's not a lot of space in between there because it was such a precipitous drop off. So, yeah, right. you're right. I mean, if we get close up over that um, four zeros and a five and then start taking off after that, I mean, yeah, th there's not a lot of room there. So yep. it doesn't mean like necessarily have to ape in right now. But I do believe that maybe particularly this month, but this quarter overall, which again is a long time frame, even for crypto, three months. I mean, I, I personally am trying to DCA as heavily as possible right now. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's just kind of where we are. And there, there's a lot of things going on, obviously, that we're going to talk about that are extremely serious, uh, that are affecting the whole world that nobody can deny. You know, We're seeing it everywhere right now. We're going to talk about that um, and how it is affecting markets and things, but l let's just shift to that now. We and we have other macro stuff with actual economic policy to get to too. But with these international tensions right now, and we're not obviously going to give you know opinions about what is going on there, other than what I think we all agree with, which is that just is all terrible and sucks and is horrible to see. And I guess like my, if there's anything for me to, to gripe about, and I shared this with you, we walk, I saw somebody else tweet about it. I'm sure there's something I can do settings wise just to alleviate this <clears throat> or who knows, maybe I need to see it. I don't know. But just like to be scrolling through Twitter and, you know, you're expecting to see updates of maybe what's going on here. And I'm seeking some of them out on YouTube and things like that to figure out what's going on. But just to see, um, dead bodies frankly just out of nowhere when you're mindlessly just on twitter is very jarring unexpected and it just seems i'm so conflicted with this because it seems like not appropriate but it's also like hey man this is going on you know i i don't know it's such a 
one thing I've learned through this and other things like this in the past is to like stay away from having any concrete opinion on anything and that nobody's necessarily right or wrong. But all I can say is it's extremely jarring to just see that stuff out of nowhere, no warning or anything. Um, you know, and uh, it's just, what do you say? I mean, it, you, <clears throat> I'd be lying if I said I didn't do a double take at some of them just to see what is going on. But when right. it starts to involve kids, that's where it's like, I, this, I, I can't do this. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's hard to, to do that in the middle of your day. But, uh, w what are your kind of, um, just reactions to everything you're seeing there now? Obviously I'm not trying to get you to give opinions on choosing sides. I don't think we're really trying to do that at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think about this scenario and how, how could what's happening right now affect markets as a whole? Uh, not just crypto, but just the world and, um, yeah, how all these markets are, as I ask an extremely selfish question. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I get it. I mean, that's why we're all here in the first place. But, you know, everybody's got some compassion built in them. And, you know, when you do see things like that uh, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll bring it back a little bit. You know, many of us do get our news from from Twitter, from X now because of the whole c19 and we don't know what to believe and you you know you really have to to struggle to find the sources that are credible because you know it, it, it unfortunately we, we we just don't know what kind of narratives being pushed or who's really behind it or what's going on but ultimately when you see a father carrying his you know deceased daughter in his arms it's heart-wrenching and it's tough um you know as for who's behind it and whose side you're on. Yeah, exactly. I don't know that we want to take a, you know, stand on either of those. That's not why we're here. Uh, but uh, again, you know, it's, it's hard because, you know, they, they do people play on emotions yes. and that's how it works. Um, that's what gets the views. That's what gets the people behind it in the direction that they want you to kind of uh, to be on. So, yeah, it, it, it's tough as, as far as the overall markets. You know, we know historically that war is good for markets. <laughs> and you can look at any chart after any war. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it goes to be almost like a, um, well, it, it's a cycle that unfortunately puts a lot of um, printing money back into the economy. Now, you know, you got the Halliburtons and the Lockheed Martins and companies like that um, that are, you know, if you haven't bought any of their stocks, you might want to do that um, <laughs> because these could go up as a Boeing and um, Raytheon and all of those. So, you know, again, historically, it's like a quantitative easing almost, um, but don't get too caught up in it because they're probably raise rates on us. Meanwhile, printing money for these wars um mm. all in all though um i think it's going to be good for the markets as as much as we hate war it it is good um for for the economy so yeah i mean that's the the warmongering establishment that we live in um it, it is what it is i think a lot of people um got tired of the rates going on and said we got to do something and you know i hate to say that but it, it's quite the possibility of of well we gotta we gotta inject some some money in here somehow so i really think that's what's happening you never know um but yeah one thing i agree with you on and, and I, I told you before the show like what you are seeing everywhere like just looking at um different people on twitter and i'm not even talking about just like crypto people or just people within hacks or anything like that but the one common thing I feel like I'm seeing, maybe I'm in a little, you know, silo on social media, but it's just a lot of people echoing exactly what you said, which is like, I want to know more about what's actually going on here, because I think this is one of the, this is so visible and so intense. Um, not that we haven't had another war raging on now for almost two years, um, but this is new and, you know, a lot of it's breaking right now and people just don't know where to go to understand what's really happening. And that is such a terrible thing, I think, like that so many people are doubting media sources, but also I'm glad that this many people are waking up and realizing that like, well, I'm not going to watch Fox News because they're going to tell me this. I'm certainly not going to watch CNN because they're going to tell me this. Where do I go? And that's where I think it is a beautiful thing that we have a lot of independent you know, content creators 
on YouTube even that have covered like politics and tensions like this in the world too. Um, I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with the Sticks Hex and Hammer 666 channel, which sounds a lot worse than it is. But uh, if you know him, he's been around for a long time and covers this stuff independently really, really well um, and gives pretty unbiased takes, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so it's been good to kind of follow his coverage of it. But yeah, you got to, in these times, you really have to look for an independent, reliable source and is it that a loaded sentence? I mean, it's very hard to do that these days. <laughs> yeah. So it is. Yeah. And and then you look at what's going on in Ukraine that's been going on. And I, I think, you know, I think Ukraine's losing a lot worse than what they say they are. You mm. know, Russia's got the force of, of many, many, many millions of more people just lined up, ready to go. And uh, again, unfortunately, I think that could be part of the reason why this has all come about. It, it, so just a hunch, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that continues to rage on. Uh, not fun for anybody, but um, as far as markets, yeah, unfortunately, I think you're right. I mean, I think that this is, um, you know, nobody within government or anything will say this or use the term quantitative easing or anything like that. But yeah, through these vehicles, I think we will start to see um, another excuse for the money printing to start. Um Turning our attention kind of more to what you were just saying and about rate hikes and things like that. I want to go back to last Friday again here. So the U.S. jobs report came out last Friday, and it was a shocker, actually. The September jobs report was extremely high, um, and expectations of another rate hike in 2023 of the two meetings that are left, um, people are starting to... Um, suspected that it may happen again. Now it is only a 14% or the 12% chance. It looks like the market is pricing in right now of a rate hike at the next meeting, which is a short three weeks away. November the 1st is when we'll see that. Um, but the Fed is kind of already airmailed and people's feelings are that this is going to mean rate hikes last longer though. So while before we thought that the uh, pivot would start to happen probably just right after the Bitcoin happening last year, lining up like, per or yeah, next year, lining up pretty much perfectly by like June or so of next year. Now we're starting to think that, well, maybe we won't see a, 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 you know, we've had pauses already, but an actual reversal to cut rates until maybe deep into the summer of next year. So what do you make of that, Ewok? Because it is interesting, like you said, while well, the money printer might come back on, um, we still may have rate hikes coming or at least hike uh, at some point next year. Um, just a very odd place to be in. You know, um, what do you what do you make of that? Because it's two things that aren't going in the same direction, it feels like. Pac-Man pretty much summed it up. Messed up world. Um, yeah. You know, as some of these companies, like we said, get richer and richer, they're going to they're going to nail the smaller guys with with the rates you're not going to be able to borrow the money you know like you, you thought you could and um you know uh, yeah we're looking into probably july august now instead of you know may or june where we see some sort of easing up or or actually lowering of the rates and you know it, it really depends on how long this war um in israel goes and um how much gets injected to see if it really plays a part with the rest of the markets um could be interesting um uh, just to, to see you know the job market's still strong and they don't like that <laughs> you know unfortunately if they if they get back to the numbers they want to get back to that means a lot of people losing their jobs well the market's yeah. still strong so they're 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 struggling to raise them too high um because everything is already overpriced but you know, at the same time, to get where they need to be, jobs got to go down and, and it's just not happening. So I don't know what happens, man. If it continues to go up, uh, do they just throw up their hands and, and say, what now? Like, what do we do? Just right. give the people the, what they want and uh, let's get on with this. Or uh, do they just keep dragging it out? And, I, you know, I, 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 I'd like to think there's enough um, big money investors in the world that you know we all know they've got pool in the government um and, and what happens with the fed so you know it, it's going to be interesting to see how long they 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 drag it out um I, I can't think it goes on forever at some point it has to end no matter if we get to that target or not yeah, they're going to give up at some point. I mean, like this whole, you know, their solution, they, they, they've kicked the can so far down the road for so yeah. long that 
money printing is really the only way out of it. And that's yep. what's going to happen. So um, if that just means that the timeline is pushed back by like a quarter or something, well, Jesus, I mean, we've already been waiting um, quite a long time here. So <laughs> uh, it's kind of just one of those things where, hey, just keep watching the calendar, keep DCAing and uh, sit back and chill. As tough as that is to do some days for sure. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, so we'll see where that goes. If you guys are enjoying the stream so far, smash the like. We very much appreciate it. We do this every single Wednesday night here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We weren't going to talk about this topic um, at all, really, but now I think it's necessitated it with some of the news that we've seen come today from the trial. Um, but this SBF case, um, this has really been something that you know people like us in DeFi really don't care about because these are... You know, talk about different people that are, have been gone after by the SEC. Here's actual real criminals that do deserve jail time that are on trial right now. But we don't really concern ourselves with them because we don't have anything to do with them. Um, but now there's some interesting stuff coming out that I think necessitates a conversation that, that affects us and everybody who has been in this market for the last few years. So um, I guess Caroline, is it Ellison? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, Fox that she is. She has okay. been uh, testifying... <laughs> For the better part of today, I believe. Um, and so the big news that actually came out today is that she was, I'm trying to remember exactly how she worded this, but that she was ordered um, to purposely attempt to suppress the BTC price below 20K. This is back about a year ago now, if you guys remember, this is when all this was really going on. Um by selling customers funds. So by actually selling their crypto to keep Bitcoin, uh, the whole thing, all of Bitcoin below 20K, all on their own. Um, and then, so so that's the first angle of this, which um, I want to get your reaction to, Ewok. But then also, uh, which just came out a little bit ago, I saw Sami tweeted this. Uh, so we're all just kind of hearing this Caroline stuff uh, over the last few hours. But Caroline drops a bombshell that uh, U.S. regulators promised SBF that FTX would increase its market share by the regulators illegally helping to shut Binance down. So we all knew that something was going on between Binance and FTX. Um, we heard about bank runs at this time last year. Um, there was a lot going on when FTX started to go down where uh, CZ, it sounded like, was speculating to, to swoop in and take things over. I don't know. Uh, the corrupt SEC has been revealed as a dingleberry. That's just me reading Sami's tweet. I didn't know what I was going to be <laughs> reading there. Uh, and Gary Gensler must be fired. Well, yeah, we we definitely agree with that. Um, but yeah, uh, would you just quote, look at that, babe? I mean, look at her. She's. I beautiful. mean, that is a hell of a rendering right there. I don't know who <laughs> drew that, but that is that is one hell of an. Uh, that person definitely. Um, Definitely yeah. infatuated some of the, the, the some of the ways she looks. It's almost like a cartoon in a in a magazine or something. Um, direct quote uh, from Ellison: Sam said that he thought that was one of the best potential ways for FTX to increase market share. Regulators had been promising him this would happen for a while. So hey, Caroline, baby, tell us everything we already know. Right. Um, that as the SEC, Gary Gensler, FTX, Sam Bankman Freed were in bed the entire time, maybe even literally with a lot of the things that we have heard. Um, and yeah, now it's all coming out, and this thing is not over yet. She is spilling the beans. Yep. So, the tea. yeah, what, what, what do you make of all this? Because, um, again, prior to this, I didn't really care, I don't think you really cared about it. I haven't heard anybody in our ecosystem really talking about it, but this is now getting to a point where it's like, wow, here's what you guys were doing, and it's even worse than we thought. Yeah, well, we know how much money they gave to all the politicians, right? And we know how much of it was very one-sided to the, the group that was operating the, um, you know, shit, what was the name of it, even where oh, they were? No, not Alameda, but the, the Operation uh, Choke Point is what I was trying to come up with. There. Oh, yeah. Um, they were trying to kill the prices of Bitcoin, of, uh, evidently. Uh, now, who was behind it? Was it really the politicians who wanted to kill crypto? Was it someone like um, BlackRock who was maybe trying to get in at a better price and invest while it was still low? have more time to do that you know it's hard to say i mean there's a lot of speculation that could be that could be made on this but you know none of it is good um none of it is natural or organic growth of, of any kind of thing you know as much as we aren't in bitcoin you still hate to see the price of things sur 
suppressed like that because it does affect the rest of crypto. Um, yeah. You know, as one thing goes up, the rising tide lifts all boats, and and we know that. And um, you know, it's just unfortunate to see that some of these things. You know, there's talk about this uh, this developer person who got involved. I, I read part of a. I have, I'm going to have to go back and read it, but there's there's conversations that she was um given out on on one of the developers too who who became way more involved than they wanted him to um and he started doing some funny funny business as well so yeah it goes deep and you know to to answer your question there dj and she doesn't i think it was just the uh Ill illustrator's version of that but yeah it didn't look good but you know she's very intelligent um she has a extremely high iq uh just like sam does uh you know they went to mm -hmm. mit i believe and yeah it, it, it's just unfortunate how markets can be manipulated like that using especially using other people's money <laughs> not even their money yeah. it wasn't yeah. like they were manipulating the price on their own they were using customer funds to to sell the price of bitcoin down to hold it down um maybe they had a short maybe they were you know we all know they placed some really terrible um limit orders and things like that and and a lot of them got wrecked so and she was behind a lot of the trading that that ended up losing money so that's another possibility uh, again there's there's a whole bunch of uh uh, theories out there as to who was doing it, why, and and who who paid them off to do it. Um, again, none of them are good for for the markets, and I, I'm glad that that you know they're getting their time in court, and hopefully they'll be in in jail soon, both of them. That's what happens when you let the chicks do the trading, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, uh, definitely a sad situation overall, and. I'm glad this is on display at this point. I mean, like, I remember people throughout the rest of this earlier this year saying that, oh, man, that trial is going to be going on. It's going to be really bearish for crypto, which I always thought was kind of just a BS statement. I mean, how can you know? We talked about this before the show. Look at the chart and then somebody can just assign any narrative to it. I, I don't know. I'm glad this is this public. I'm glad people are seeing what's going on. And I hope and I think that long term people are going to really understand like this has nothing to do with crypto. You know, they, these are not crypto people. These are people that were out to line their own pockets and steal money. It's not DeFi. It's the furthest thing from it. So, um, yeah, I'm glad we're seeing it for what it is and, you know, hope that it is a lesson for the next market. Now, yeah, are we going to have, as Mr. Ginsler says, hawksters, fraudsters, and uh, whatever other words he has in that clip? Con artists. Con artists. <laughs> we are going to have them in this next <clears throat> cycle, Gary oh. among them. Um, yeah. We are going to have them out there. Uh, who knows how they'll be. But this is why we, we've had this conversation before. This is kind of why we stay where we are in our little DeFi silo here. And sure, I mean, anybody can invest however they want. If you don't want to invest in Richard Hart products and you're interested in some other DeFi type thing, that's fine. But I would just want to ensure that you are doing things actual in a DeFi way, which is what crypto is actually meant to be. Yep. Don't be leaving things on these exchanges. I mean, everybody here knows that by this point. But hey, who knows? Somebody's going to be watching this stream in about six months from now when the market's picked back up yep. and uh, not know what to do. So, well, um, you yeah. know, get as far away as the middleman as you possibly can. You know, mm -hmm. we, we've said it again, and it's probably a good time to bring it up again, uh, that you have to use some of these um exchanges for for your business i get it you've got to get in you've got to get out um but think of it as like you're going into the ghetto to buy something you probably shouldn't be buying um you get in you get out you do you get in you do your business and you get out um that's probably the safest way um and even then there's a risk of, of something going down or not being able to get your money out but um yeah that's that's it, it goes without saying, and probably people don't say it enough, uh, spend as little time as possible on these centralized exchange platforms. Yeah. So I'm sure more is going to come from this. Uh, yeah, that'll probably be even worse and uh, juicy as well. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on it and talk about it next week, but uh, certainly uh, not not fun stuff to, to learn from all this. So um, speaking of drama, we can just kind of acknowledge this really quick. I, I honestly have lost the plot at this point. I don't even know what the plot is um, or, or where it's going. But um, I have a more interesting point, I think, about all this. So um, 
anybody on Twitter may have witnessed this week some of the Buck Fiat versus B Root stuff. I guess that's where the initial thing is stemming from. And then there was a tweet by that one account the other day uh, that we were discussing privately, Ewok. Um, that was showing some Telegram group that had like a bunch of hexagons in it that may or may not be doing this. I don't really know what the person was trying to to claim was going on. Um, but I think the the buck from Fiat and B-Roots thing has been I, – I haven't seen a lot of it. So I, I think that it was mostly good-natured at first. Um, I know they kind of had like a debate about where Paul's chain could go over the next few years. That was a couple of months back or so. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I have no idea what's actually going on with this anymore, and I, I don't really care that much. But Maybe somebody in the chat can fill us in. But to me, the good takeaway of this, because it's not just those two, is like with how much people are kind of going at each other's throats and talking about this Telegram thing. I mean, it is signs of a fervent community either way. Like there are people just going after each other hardcore in this ecosystem. Um, and maybe why you don't like to see that, you know, and we hope we're all on the same page. It's nice that people are this excited about different products and how they should be handled and whether this one's a scam or that one's a scam and blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I'm just interested in the fact that people are this passionate in this community. I would rather see it be actual, I guess, passion in terms of, you know, just DeFi as a whole. But if people are, you know, I guess this just speaks to where we are at the end of the bear market here, where, you yeah. know, it seems like this has been a year we've been saying this, but sure. people are just down this low where, um, you know, and I'm seeing thoughts about like, Never do screenshots. If there's something private, it's meant to be private. Don't do screenshots. But the Telegram group was open. I don't know. I don't even understand the Telegram group. I don't know where this thing is at this point. Um, maybe you can fill us in or, or know where it is a little bit more. But what do you make of what's been going on here? Yeah, just a bunch of unnecessary drama um, between B Roots and, and Buck. Um, I don't know. Maybe Brizology can chime in here. He's usually into a lot of the the behind this not behind the scenes or whatever but he follows it pretty closely a lot closer than i do um yeah i mean it's just got to be a i think that's what happened at first they saw this group of people um most of them were more og hexican folks um i saw some names in there it was funny though the one name that they didn't show was richard hart and Richard was also in that group at one point. I think eventually um, he had a screenshot of it. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. I, I saw that. Wasn't so that wasn't one of the first ones, which was kind of a little misleading there. Um, and said that these folks were kind of almost, I don't want to say a pump and dump, but they were getting the inside scoop on what was going on. Well, you know, if they're friends, friends talk. Like, so yeah. it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen no matter what, whether you want to see it or not, or whether you believe it's not going on. I'm sure it is everywhere. In every ecosystem, there are the people in the know. Um, and apparently somebody got their feelings hurt because they weren't probably in the know um, and felt like maybe they were being taken advantage of or people were trying to run some sort of pump and dump or whatever, whatever it was. Anyway, just, again, unnecessary drama uh, between the two. Uh, the last thing that I kind of came across this afternoon was them agreeing to keep each other's names out of each other's mouth. Um, and you know, Buck did say at one point, Hey man, you got to say that a lot of this shit wasn't true that, you know, none of that, um, I, I guess it was, uh, colluding was going on in, in the back rooms there, um, that, you know, you made quite a mess for me now to clean up. If you could at least say that, you know, that was all speculation and there's no proof of any of that stuff going on, I would appreciate it. So that's where I right. saw it being left off today again hopefully it you know goes away just like any of the other little you know fights that the little girls are having and um you know the one thing that i i will agree with um that b roots did say was you know buck's project could end up hurting some people you know if you don't know what you're doing please don't leverage trade um, it is a dangerous kind of thing, you know, it, it, and you can easily get your bags liquidated if, if you're not really sure what's going on. So um, that's all I wanted to say about that. You know, if, if you know what you're doing and you can use the tool to um, to hedge a bet, 
uh, you got a big bag and you want to maybe play a short just in case the market goes down to offset it. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and you know, you're not using all your bag, then more power to you. But you know, they are dangerous products for a reason. And, you know, somebody is going to end up making money. As far as I know, though, these are contracts are, are kind of locked and it's the, the users of the ecosystem that actually make out. So it's not Buck. Buck's not, I mean, you know, he probably owns quite a bit of the token that gets paid whenever somebody gets liquidated. Right. Um, but, you know, anybody can buy into that pool. So, you know, if you want to kind of bet against it and you don't like it, well, then maybe make money off the people that are losing. So there, there's always a good play and a good way to stay safe, um, but still make out uh, with some of these products. You know, Liquid Loans is going to be the same way. I saw a, a really cool um, show last night with, with Maddie and um, they had Walrus on oh, yeah. talking a lot about too. Liquid Loans. Um, and there was some people in the chat that were just upset that, you know, Walrus is going to take all your money. And well, first of all, it's a locked code. It's locked code. The only people that can profit from any of this stuff are the people that that uh, put their money into the pool that backs the whole product. You know, again, locked, Im immutable stuff um, that just operates based on code. Um, not any one person that's going to be able to rug pull. So you know, again, if you're not interested or don't want to take a loan out, well, then put some money into the pool uh, where the people that do get liquidated because they don't know what they're doing, um, that's where you're going to profit. So, or, or just stake it. There's plenty of things to do uh, when it comes to, to these type of things um, rather than saying, well, it's new. I should probably try it out. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good idea, especially if you don't know what you're doing. You know, you've got to do your research. You've got to know what's going on. Um, and, and know how easily one candle can can really wreck you and you know you end up in a really bad spot so yeah just some words of wisdom words of advice for people um you know the, the drama does bring out some of these points um it's a long way to get there sometimes <laughs> but it, it does it does flush out some good advice for people and uh you know unfortunately like i said sometimes you got to take a, a long walk around to, to get to the point to realize what's actually happening yeah, I think the main other thing to take away from this now, too, is that this month we've talked about it is going to be great for Paul's chain. I mean, we have all these different things launching, you know, say what you will about Buck. I mean, like the products actually being out there and working pretty much before almost anybody else is a, a good thing. Yeah. And then we're also, yeah, as you mentioned, with Walrus, I did watch that stream with Maddie Allen last night. It was about like two, two and a half hours, yeah. but I thought it was fantastic. It was good to hear all of their thoughts on everything going on in crypto um, for sure. But yeah, liquid loans coming out soon. The fetch Oracle more important as importantly. I mean, I think all this stuff is really bullish and walrus. I, I always like his points. He's very good at kind of zooming out on not just the chart, but just kind of like where we're at mentally with everything and yeah. say, look, like <clears throat> this has happened. That has happened, you know, in terms of bad things that, have happened with the sec which we're going to get to here a little bit in a minute um but hey all these things are still being built all those validators are still there like look at the behaviors not necessarily what the price is today you know um so yeah i think those are all great points and as far as the yeah. drama whatever i mean I, I i really haven't been paying attention to it and um you know it, they, again my main point like the fact that there are people this feverish within this ecosystem i think is good because you mm -hmm. know you, you don't have things like this happening in cardonzo's world you mm -hmm. don't have things like this happening in solana's world a lot of the other l1s and stuff like yeah. that so agree yeah yeah so. and, and like i said you know it's to, to try and stay away from the drama too because it it does bring you down man reading and seeing people fighting back and forth and bickering it gets you in a bad headspace you know where you're trying to keep positive you're trying to to do the right things for the, you know, the mentality of staying in a, you know, a, a positive mindset because it is tough. It is hard to go through these markets like this. And, and when you're trying to keep yourself positive, sometimes reading that stuff can bring it right back down. It kind of, you know, you have to reset a little bit. So stay, stay away from it. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, I want to transition to this. So RH greasing us, uh, gre gracing us with his presence, greasing us maybe a little bit too, but uh, gracing us with his presence here a couple of times this week, at least on Twitter. Um, it was birthday the other day. We got a little birthday audio message tweet. Um, I'll only acknowledge this thing for a moment because then he had more important tweets, obviously. But uh, 
the big thing everybody was wondering is, was it AI? Was it really Richard Hart's voice? Was it AI Richard Hart? I don't know. Um, was there any significance to the picture that he used? Uh, I said this to you the other day, Ewok. I love this part of all of his tweets right now. Me being a huge band or yeah, a huge fan of the bands, Tool, Pink Floyd, stuff like that. I love, um, you know, I have a long history of like dissecting lyrics and like, what's the deeper meaning in this song? And I feel like we've hit that dynamic with Richard Hart tweets now where people are dissecting every single angle of it. What does this really mean? What's the code here? You know, and then he uploads an audio and it's like, was that really him or was it just AI? Um, but yeah, what do you, what do you make? And we're going to get into his more specific tweets about, uh, the upcoming SEC and IRS rulings. Um, but what do you make of his, of his overall kind of shift to AI right now? Do you think, um, it's just purely that he's interested in it. And as somebody who, you know, studies markets and is a very smart guy, you can see that this is the big wave of this next cycle, which I think it definitely is. A lot of AI stuff is going to be coming. Um, I heard Arthur Hayes last week talk about he has a very large position in a uh, AI uh, sex doll company coming out here <laughs> over the next few years. And that that may be like the biggest boom that we see, which makes a lot of sense with yeah. uh, the male female situation these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so is it that, or do you think it's is Richard mainly paying attention to this because of um, some of the things that are going on with the SEC now, and literally with his trying to educate lawyers and things like that um, using AI? What what do you think it, this shift to that has been for him? Well, first I want to answer Johnny real quick. He, he wants to know if we have time to talk after the show. We'll send you the link, or I'll send you the link. I can hang out for a few minutes after the show in the green room so i gotta go to betty bye i'm an old man all right well tonight, I, so. I can chat for a little bit johnny but i, I just want to get him answered real quick there so you, you watch you taking personal calls here on the, yeah, on the live stream yeah i'm sorry <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know that the voice message was ai um I don't, think it was. I don't think it was either way he took the time to do it and post it so even if it was ai and wasn't really his voice i think he i think he's um really into it I, I think he understands like you know he's he's one of those big brain guys to begin with and, and i think he understands how it can make the average guy uh appear to be a big brain person too i mean you can see some of the stuff and he's giving people a lot of tips and pointers on how to use it and how to write these letters um you know, for, for crypto, for hex, whatever you want to use it for, but to the SEC and to the IRS and things like that. Uh, it's been pretty cool. I think he's just enamored with the whole AI thing and, and trying to get people to use the tools uh, that are out there. You know, he's always been one to, to, to say, you know, take advantage of some of these things that, that are given to you. It's not often that people do uh, good <laughs> or put good things out for people. And, and when they do, you should really take advantage of them. And I kind of think that's what he's saying um, in a lot of his, his messaging. Um, you know, for him, it can make him sound even more smart than he is. And, and for the average guy, it can also up your game as well. So, you know, there's a lot of good tools. I personally don't think the message was AI. I've heard people say that, yeah, it wasn't really him posting it. So, you know, you guys are foolish for, for listening to it. Well, if it wasn't, he still took the time to do it on his birthday um, and and posted it on his, you know, on his Twitter. So whatever. I, who cares? Who cares if it was AI? But I, again, he took the time out to say, I hope you guys are doing well. And um, as far as the picture with the thumbs up, I, I didn't make a whole lot out of it. I, I didn't really read into it too much. You know, like you said, you start reading into every little thing now because he's kind of been you know hiding in, in the shadows a little bit so you got to decrypt things or, or you know a, a lot of times we make things out of nothing um you know it could be just as simple as a hello i'm thinking about you guys hope everyone's doing good thanks for all the birthday wishes he can't say that because you know what richard doesn't read messages so i think that right. was a way of him saying kind of thanks for all the birthday wishes that i really don't read that was my take on it. And that's kind yeah. of what I decoded it to be uh, because yeah, Richard doesn't read messages. He doesn't uh, read the newspaper. He doesn't read anything. So, you know, just wanted to reach out and say hello. I think that's all it was. Yeah. I'm sure it was just, you know, he probably did um, 
imagine that people were wishing him happy birthday and stuff like that and wants to connect in whatever way he can during this time. You know, I think it's kind of similar to, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when we were on with uh, Rags, um, his message at the premiere of the uh, film um, that he did in Miami. I think that was yeah. kind of a similar thing. Just wanted to show appreciation for sure. everybody. And I, you know, I think that's one thing that gets lost lost sometimes um well, it certainly is lost to people who don't you know commonly follow our age or isn't really involved in this ecosystem is i don't think those people really know how much he does care about the people that are right. interested in him and his products and stuff like that absolutely um, and i he appears very genuine to me so um more importantly with his tweets the last couple of days so he uh was banging on this drum a couple of weeks ago talking about these upcoming decisions from the sec and the irs on two separate issues um he tweeted about them which i bookmarked here again the other day um essentially saying that i think there's 20 days left in each one of here, I'm already on my bookmarks. Uh, yeah, 20 days left in two of these. So the SEC Federal Register and then the IRS one. The SEC is the comment period. Um, they open back up, but you can still they, they closed it, but you can still uh, leave comments for it. And then the IRS one as well. Um, I submitted for both of these. I think a lot of people within the ecosystem did. The IRS one is the gross proceeds and basis reporting by brokers and determination of amount realized and basis for digital asset transactions. So um, you can read the summary. It's a bit of a mouthful. And then the SEC one is actually titled uh, Safeguarding Advisory Client Assets Reopening of Comment Period, which is what they're doing right now. So you can check both of those out. Um, and then Richard goes on to give you uh, ways to make substantive comments using a couple of different AI tools. I prefer the Bing one, but the Claude.ai one is out there as well. This has kind of caused other people to throw out the examples of what they are submitting for each one of those. Mm -hmm. October 30th is the deadline for both. Um, I thought it was very interesting, and I pointed this out to you, Ewok, that in his... So it, right after that tweet, he backed it up with uh, right here. So lawyers proposed rule comments. And then he goes down with eight bullet points about um, dealing with this SEC one. He says, what if classes taught at MIT by Gary Gensler with a link to the course were inducements and instructions on how to exchange value? Is this on clean hands? Hmm. I thought that was a very interesting bullet point of the ones that he had on here. So um yeah, what do you make of him going back to this? I love that he's kind of summonsing people to say, hey, um, yeah. get in there, you know, uh, make your voice heard, let them know what's going on. And, you know, it's kind of like a preparatory step of saying, hey, this is the kind of stuff you're going to be up against, and this is what lawyers will have to say. So um, have yeah. an army of uh, DeFi folks coming after them. So, yeah, what do you make of this? And, um, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, I think it allows the average guy – to be able to sound very intelligent, almost lawyer speak, um, and, and participate. And I think everybody should. If you haven't, you really should. Um, I started to make one. I haven't sent it yet, but I, I, I've been kind of working on it when I get a chance. Uh, and I will get it in before the deadline. But, you know, you get to see a lot of these people's examples that they've sent. Uh, the things that that mean a lot to them, and it could mean anything to you. You don't have to use any of the examples; um, just use it and, and have it well written for you. But yeah, using Gensler's own words against him is it? Oh, I, I love it. I think it's it's awesome how yeah. you know. Wow. Hey, this is the class that you taught people, uh, and now we're saying that that's there's you know the the clarity has has really gone away. What you said. Uh, last week doesn't match up with that at all. So which is it? We, you know, the the, mm -hmm. the one you taught in the class at MIT or or what you're saying here on the stand because you're kind of protecting your ass kind of thing. So, right. yeah, I, I love it. I, I, I love the dig. Um, but yeah, I, I really think that as many people should participate as they can. And not even just a dig. I mean, it's literally pointing out the hypocrisy of Gensler, yeah. which we're all, of course, aware of. But it's like, yeah, how can you come out here going after all these things now when you have literally taught an entire college course on this saying the opposite? Um, yep. There's video where we've all seen of him calling the Ethereum a commodity already yep. from years ago. So, um, yeah, I mean, we know the guy's corrupt. We know the SEC. I don't know if every single one of the people there is corrupt, but hey, guilty by association um, yep. in this case. So, uh well, 
Well, they haven't done anything about it. So as far as I'm concerned, they're all guilty. Yeah. And they've taken L after L after L when it comes to crypto. I don't think we're going to see anything different in this case. So, um, yeah. So if you guys have not gotten in there and I'll go ahead and just leave the links for both of them in there. Not that you necessarily need them from me since Richard Hart actually tweeted them out, but yeah. um, I'll throw the IRS one and the SEC one in there. Um, but yeah, look at some examples from some other folks. If you want to be as lazy about it, as just kind of reading somebody else's trying to understand it. You can, I love using these AI tools. I mean, you can literally just go in there and say, Hey, paraphrase this for me, please, sure. and do a copy paste. I would still go over and make sure you understand the information. I was talking to somebody I know who's a college professor about this kind of stuff earlier today and that isn't as well versed in using some of these AI tools yet. And they were just like, I know these kids are turning in AI stuff right now. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they are. They, well, I don't know. I mean, this generation seems to be pretty like a lot dumber than ours right now, uh, uh, but they are young. So. There's some smart ones out there. So the ones that are using it are definitely taking advantage of it. They should um, be. And yeah. the, but what they should do is the same thing I'm saying here is like, don't just let it spit something out and be like, okay, copy, paste, throw it in. I mean, like understand the information and sure. you know w what it spit out may have errors, of course. So, yeah. you know, make sure you understand that too, but it's, yeah, you, it's a hell of a tool. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to proofread it and look over it and, and you can even ask it to make some changes, um, to, to kind of fit your personality too. If you don't like how it's wording mm -hmm. things, um, say a little bit less lawyer speak, um, re right. rewrite this a little bit less legal stance, um, and it'll do it. It's pretty crazy. I, I used it one time. Uh, my daughter, had. we went on a trip during school and I needed some sort of educational uh, paper writing why we were missing school. And uh, so I had AI do it. It was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, it spit it out, go. gave all the reasons uh, and the different things that you could learn educationally from this place that we went to listed them. I was great. It, it was pretty, that's awesome. a good, that's a really good way to use it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause you don't want, you know, you, you, you feel like, well, they're going to think I'm bullshitting or something right, like that. Right? Like, yeah, it just, but spit, at the very least, out, you know, it spits out the facts and that yeah. hard to argue with facts. Even if you don't, again, like the way that it says it necessarily, you can kind of you it up a little bit and yeah. add in, you know, ways you would say some things. So, yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. And really it's not that far off from like just Googling stuff. You know, I'm right. noticing with, uh, I mean, it, it gives you even more, but it's making me realize it's like, well, we've been Googling stuff for how many years now, you know, it's, it's kind of like doing that, but just getting it even more curated for what you're looking for. So, um, yeah, I think college will be obsolete, which is fine with me. Uh, it's about time really. Um, what do we got Thanks here for D'Artagnan eight? Thanks for the super chat. Hex, Pulse, Pulse X, which of the three will pump the hardest this bull run? Um, Collect them all. First. Well, hey, I, I mean, I own all of them equally, uh, and I have been DCAing into all of them equally. So that's a tough one. I mean, I would say my guess, you know, and obviously not financial advice. I'm just uh, throwing something out into the wind here. But I think that of the three, three um if you want to combine the hexes and then just have each of the other ones i think pulse will be the one that will pump the most this cycle i think if we look two cycles into the future we could see pulse x maybe being the the one that i don't want to call it a better long-term play necessarily i just think that maybe it will do more x's from its ultimate low over the course of about eight years or so but i do think this cycle that the l1 will likely outperform but yeah what do you think you walk yeah i think I think it'll be hex. Um, I really do. Really? At, at okay. point zero zero three. Just what an OG hexagon would say. Well, I I do. I think the Maxi. next cycle, though, I think Pulse will will um, definitely take that title away, um, only because this is hex's second cycle. At point zero zero three, or even point zero zero seven, whatever. Point zero zero three, you're getting three for a dollar. Um, at a penny, you've three x. At a nickel. You 15x at a dime, you've 25x. So, uh, you know, it, it's going to be, I, I don't know. I just don't see it. And I mean, just getting back to all time highs, we're going to have some, some crazy numbers um, as far as X's go. I, I think Hex still pumps the hardest. And I think enough people find it um, in time uh, by coming to this, this ecosystem. And realizing that hex is still the store of value, um, I just 
but no financial advice, none. That's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I do think Pulse will probably pump the most this coming cycle. Um, Ewok, obviously, being a hex max as he is, is going to say hex. So we'll see. I mean, that's why you know, nobody knows the answers to this. That's why I yeah. just own them all equally. Well, so. he wanted us to get our crystal ball out, which, you know, Naga has the Naga only Bo. crystal ball that I know. So, and I yeah. think it's, it's broken as far as I know. Well, I think What's he's it? on, well, I forget, is it Tropa? um you know a godsend and i you know i'm going to sell all my pulse chain for a tropa or is it a scam or you know because naga bow i've seen it seems like saying uh you know doing a 180 a couple times yeah, back he's all over the place i think he's just kind of covering all bases and depending yeah. on w- what week it is and which casino he lost at, at exactly at this week, sell so. this information to this side sell this information to the <laughs> exactly. other side and don't let the other ones know i know the game yeah um yeah. So uh, anyway, really interesting stuff from RH this week. So for sure, if you guys have time, which, hey, doesn't, didn't take me that long, five minutes or so to submit comments for both of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, Martin Von Wundergas. Uh, yeah. Shout out. Go say hi to Sami and KDP over there for yeah. us whenever you get a whenever you get a chance. Um, Tans, OK, all so those guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you guys are still here, we still got about 20 minutes left. Smash the like. We appreciate you guys joining us tonight. We have an active chat. There's Philly. Uh, Phillies are dominating the Braves again tonight. They're up two games to one after this win tonight. What does he say here? What's he got for us? He says, how about the hex to hex ratio? Say 0.1 total. Do you think E hex one penny to two penny and, and P hex eight cents to nine cents? No. I, I think a it, big disparity there. Yeah, I think it closes in. I don't think you're going to be that far off. Um, again, just an opinion, but I, I think it. I think it. You know, the higher it gets, the the ratio could pull a little tighter. Um, I, I think if you see something maybe at twenty cents to fifteen cents, I think it could keep up that way as it as it increases. Um, I, I don't think you're you're gonna see it though at like what you're looking at like eight eight times between four and right. eight times higher, um, and that's a hell of a ratio to to break, um, especially with the way liquidity is bonded now. Um, I don't see it really going in the opposite direction, only because it's a it's a it's a self uh, correcting system. As far as T-shares go, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but we're now over 30,000 yep. um, hex per T-share on both on both chains. So, you know, it, it will correct and, and the T-shares will reward you. And just think, guys, whenever I forget what the cost of it is. I saw this statistic the other day. Um, when you get a T-share right now, I think you're paying maybe 30,000. You're probably getting it for what, seven? Was it seven hundred bucks? Maybe not even that much. No, I think it's uh, less than that. Yeah, maybe w- whatever it was. But imagine the price of that times whatever it is to get to the all time high. You're not going to be able to afford one t shirt um, if we get back to the the, the previous all time high. Um, so it, again, it's a self kind of correcting system with the t shirt value, the amount of hex per t shirt that's a payout. The less people that stake, you know, the the more enticing it is for people to get into that side. So, again, I, I really don't see this kind of ratio getting that far off. But, you know, I, I could be completely wrong, but I, I don't see it getting that out of whack. Yeah, that would be pretty far. I mean, the worst we've even seen now is pretty much just maybe two and a half to one or something like that at, yeah. at, the, at the worst, I think. So, yeah, yeah that would be pretty crazy. Um I, I'm basically, I mean, what my approach has been with the two hexes is um, my E hex has been staked out. I've staked all of it out, um, you know, as soon as the split happened, basically any that I had liquid, I even staked out just for a year. Um, but I, I have been buying more, you know, regular hex than I have E hex lately. So we will see. I mean, that doesn't mean, I, I think everybody's a little bit like, you know, not sure what to do with E hex, yeah, but probably. what unequivocally I could say is likely the very wrong decision is to sell any of it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think there's really, yeah. what, what trade are you going to make? What, right. what are you going to do? You know, that's why I just staked it all. So, well, I, I think um, honestly a, a good thing to do with it was what we talked about on the last show. And that was get into the, the base, um, 
you know, pull as, with your hex. It it yeah. it stakes it for you. You know, you can you can redeem it for whatever the hex is worth, and you don't have to pay those crazy Ethereum fees to end the stake. So, you know, that was a good thing to do. Uh, just holding on to it liquid is a good thing to do. But you're right, selling it is probably a bad thing to do with at, right now, especially. You know, not saying when we start making some some gains that you shouldn't DCA out as well. You know, it's just as important to DCA in as it is to DCA out. So, yeah, um, let's uh, I want to get to this real quick um, and then we'll, we'll get to some more questions because we have a lot in the chat tonight. So we'll get to you guys in just a second. Um, I want to hit this was our main topic. We haven't even talked about it really yet. So um, you guys are kind of leading us into it anyway. But I. Again, we may very well be entering right now the final quarter to buy at these kind of prices. It's Q4 of 2023, the year before the Bitcoin happening. Um, I, I started this channel a little over a year ago, um, basically talking about minimalism as a way of life and ways of saving money to be able to DCA into this market. Since then, people didn't really give a shit about hearing about that. You know, we've always done this show, but we wanted this to really take over the channel. It's it's better content. People enjoy watching it more. I like doing it more. I think you do too, Ewok. But, you know, we're at the point now where this may be it. Um, this may be our final chance, these three months, to really get in at these prices before things take off in 2024. If that's the case, you know, I, I think we should be talking about doing anything we possibly can to DCA into this market right now. Um, you know, I, I have, on this channel in the past have talked about uh, the fact that, you know, especially with inflation and things like that right now, you can save so much money on what you're eating. Dave Ramsey always talks about eating rice and beans if you're in debt. People will roll their eyes at that and be like, oh, I'm not going to sacrifice my lifestyle. Why the hell not? I mean, if you are down right now and you have asymmetric opportunities at some of the prices of your favorite cryptos right now. We should remember that like any $500 investment in something that you think is good, that is going to go up with just a, with a 30 X is $15,000, like mm -hmm. in under two years. So $500 to $15,000. I think it's good to think of that when you're DCAing into this market right now to realize like, man, if I have any spare change laying around, if there's anything I can sell around the house, if I can lower some utility bills or something like that, if I can get a second job, get a pay raise, um, you know, whatever it is, like any have a yard sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever Stuff it is, you don't there's... need anymore that you can always buy more of later. You know, um, it's a good, mm -hmm. it's a good opportunity. I don't know if a lot of you know. Um, I haven't seen him in our chat. He hasn't really made an appearance, but Hexdeck. 16 um he his story is he used to clean and detail cars um he would yeah. find loose change all the time and that's what he pretty much invested from the beginning was his loose change uh that he had collected from from cleaning cars and things like that uh pretty cool story you know but it, it just goes to show you how much a little bit invested here and there at the right times can, can turn out to be crazy good profits. So yeah, take advantage of it, man. It's not going to be here forever. And, you know, eventually I can see a lot of you guys saying, man, I'll wait till it get, gets back down to a penny and uh, I'll buy in then. Well, you may never see that price again. So, or may five cents or whatever it may be with your favorite crypto, you know, it could be XRP and you're saying, well, I'm going to wait for it to get down to 10 cents. Well, you know, it may never come. It, it just you right. just you know that's what people do all the time is they procrastinate and, and say I'll get in when it comes back down and it never does and, and then they're mad at everybody else because oh you got lucky <laughs> so yes you know that's just kind of how it goes sometimes I think it's lost on people that you know you know we're talking about these kind of tips for saving money so you can DCA right now but also just sticking with something. Like mm -hmm. you just said, Ewok, talking about people that, oh, you got lucky because they they went somewhere else. Like they went around for this part of the market because it's boring. Yeah. They don't want to wait for it. They want the confirmation from all their friends who already got in to then get back into the market. Um, somebody in the chat just said, fortune favors the bold. I mean, yeah, these buys aren't necessarily going to feel, unless you're real crazy um, like us, I mean, they're not going to feel all that great, especially if they start yeah. going down right away, like the one I just made last Friday. Sure. But it, it you know, that that's just part of doing business. That's why 
stop looking at the prices every day. Just look at the calendar. It's still 2023. Basically, this year is just not going to be good. We, no. we talked about it since the beginning of the year. This should be an accumulation year. We're still accumulating. This may be the final stages of it. Now, we say that right now. That doesn't mean the calendar hits January 1st and BTC's at 45K or something like that. You know, we may still have a little bit of the first quarter to be able to do as well. Maybe we even get a pullback again after the halvening. It's it, there's going to be ebbs and flows, but you don't want to miss that asymmetric upside to when those green candles start to come and just yeah. one after the other. And all of a sudden everybody's FOMOing into the market. It's already done. I mean, like in a matter of a couple of days, what could have been a 30 X buy for you is just gone half. Yeah. Totally gone. Yeah. So yeah. don't and worry about big, how wrecked things are. Yeah, yeah. And the big candle moves always happen within a very short period of time. You know, right. you're going to see these stair steps up as it grows. But when it really starts to go, it goes. And if mm -hmm. you're not already in the position that you want to be, you've missed it, um, yep. unfortunately, because now you're just trying to catch it. <laughs> and that's what happens to the markets where a lot of people FOMO in and create those big candles within a week or so. Um, you know, sometimes it's a couple weeks, but either way, that's what causes it because they were like, shit. Here it goes, and I missed it. Now they're everybody's just dumping into the market, and that's what causes the parabolic upswing. So, yeah, yeah, I, I am basically operating at like a lowest level of an emergency fund that I would be comfortable having at any given time right now. Like yeah. I'm just any any other piece of money that comes in, I'm just basically putting into the market. And I mean that that's what we're doing. I mean it doesn't mean that you guys have to do it that way. Whatever will let you sleep at night. Um, but boy, I just don't want to be missing these prices right now. Yep. So, yeah. Um, good sure. convo. Uh, hey, Ewok, did you want to mention, so we a uh, new site that we have, is it Pulse Coin List that we wanted to check out? Oh, yeah. Um, I was sharing yeah. it earlier. Um, let me bring it back up here. That's what sure. we were kind of looking at earlier. This, this Oh, this, I, this is I the, didn't have the this page. up on my screen when you did it. Then. So, PulseCoinList.com, and this is forward slash stats. Um, but it, it's nice. There's a lot of, there's token ranking. There's the ERC versus PRC, um, multi charts, the ecosystem. You can check a balance. You can actually buy pulse. Um, here's your main coins. Here's the pulse chain supply. It tells you whether we're being, um, um, inflationary or deflationary, depending on the, the burn and the issuance. So that's pretty cool. It shows you the, the gas charges right now yeah. um yeah there's a lot of cool stuff in here just check it out when you get a chance i thought it was a a pretty cool site and, and like i said there's a lot of different you know the token ranking where it will it will list um here's your like top movers and your pulse chain token ranking so here's how they're ranked out as far as you know market cap goes i think you can filter it by market cap or whatever you want to filter it by. Yeah, I uh, like this. It's a really you, good layout. When you do that, there is a little bit of a problem here with um, the numbers getting out of whack. So just be careful of that. So, um, but, is this actually the site? Is this the site from back? Um, yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this used to be, I had this bookmarked months ago when Paul's first launched, um, as an ERC 20 versus PRC 20 comparison, because yes. that was its main draw and they stopped updating the site. I noticed they weren't updating prices anymore. This is now it again. So they just yeah. did this major update, I guess. So they updated it all. Yeah. But so the, yeah. that part of it is still, is still there under yeah. the ERC PRC, um, and it's back live again. So yeah, nice. just another, another tool. Again, the community is amazing. Building and and doing the things that you want to do um, in a bear market, it, it, it's crazy how much growth and how many platforms and how many builders and developers and and just and then even the streamers. You know, if you can't build or or be a developer or a coder or anything like that, it's the people that are starting up their new channels and. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's amazing. I just, I, I can't say enough good things about this community and, you know, for all the hate that, that we get, it, it just keeps growing and that's, what's going to win this battle. And it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And we have seen, you know, um, we haven't been streaming since the early days of Hex necessarily, but I know you were there right 
at the beginning Ewok. And uh, yeah, there's been so many waves of streamers and stuff this time around. Um, I'm really glad that we've stayed this active and been here throughout the bear market. I mean, I think that's really what will differentiate, um, you know, who to kind of tune into and watch and stuff as we get into the bull market, because we're going to have a lot of new phases, I think, coming in by that time. It's yeah. going to be such an exciting time. And, I, you know, speaking about like um, the community and bridges being built and stuff, shout out to uh, Corey Costa the other night was on Ben Armstrong's new channel. Did you see that? Mm -mm, um, I didn't. Yeah, he was on. Ben has, I don't know, I think they're still working out the kinks, but he has some kind of new kind of whip around crypto show with, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if they're both guys that were at BitBoy Crypto in the past. Uh, I think he knew at least one of them. Crossfire yeah. Crypto or something like that. Crypto yeah, Crossfire. I, yeah. Um, but yeah, Corey was on there the other night and uh, repping Pulse Chain and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I'm glad that Ben's doing okay. I mean, we're not necessarily like, weren't like BitBoy fans necessarily, but hey, I mean, uh, it's a weird situation overall for sure. Yeah. Everything that's gone on there, certainly a lot of drama, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely back him and his channel versus Discover Crypto any day of the week. And um, shout out to him too for having Corey on. And, you know, even though Ben... I think probably could have given more lip service to Paul's chain and hex over the course of the years. Um, he's certainly been more open than a hell of a lot of other mainstream crypto people. So. Yeah. Well, a lot of that had to do with his sponsorships and things mm -hmm. like that. You know, he, 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 he made a lot of money with hex in the early days. Um, he, I think he profited over $60,000 and he sold really early. <laughs> so he had a bag early and, and made some excuses of why he sold it. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, the problem I had with him is that he he would always say, well, it's too complicated, too complicated. Um, but I think it was just because that his people and his sponsors didn't want him talking about it, even though he probably had a secret bag. Um, yeah, they just didn't want him talking about it. And he fed into that whole um, gatekeeping issue that, you know, that we find a lot of, you know, people that have sponsors are in. Um, right. You know, it is what it is. They're paid to talk about certain things and they get in trouble when they talk about others. So, yeah, it's all right. We'll break through and the walls will come down eventually. I think they definitely will. And we've had that discussion about how um, an L1, even though we obviously have always thought Hex was totally legitimate, um, you know, in the eyes yeah. of all crypto. But, you know, I think having an L1 and a DEX and all that stuff from Richard now, I think that some of these big channels, is, they, they probably never will. The banklesses of the world and the, uh, no, I mean, no, they're, no. they're total garbage. But, um, you know, with some people, I think that'll bring more credibility in their eyes and they might have to actually acknowledge it. But, hey, if you want to just keep being dumped on by optimism and arbitrum and stuff like that and cover all these other layer ones and twos and stuff and not Paul Shane, that's totally fine. I mean, we're, we're actually starting from the bottom. You know, right. not that we right. don't get dumped on, you know, I mean, clearly, I mean, that that has happened by people that had bigger bags and stuff. But at least we know there wasn't like all these hidden seed rounds that we weren't privy to. And, you know, at some point they're just going to be unlocked and dumped on our heads. So, you know, yeah. is that anyway? So, yep, for sure. Cool. Well, I think that pretty much covers it here tonight. I was just doing one final scan of the chat. Hey, we appreciate it. A lot of guys in the chat. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Hey, do us a favor, hit the like on the way out. You know, it helps us get kind of boosted up there in the algorithm and um, just shows everybody. It's a statement for real DeFi, you know, supporting this channel, supporting Sami, supporting Crypto Coffee, supporting Maddie Allen, like all these other channels. They're all, of course, way bigger than us. Corey Geary, all these different people that are out here streaming. Um, if you're not liking, commenting, just doing something to boost up the Pulse Chain algorithm, I think we're all missing an opportunity. Yeah. I've been trying to make, you know, do better with that myself just to give shout outs on other people's streams because I think it really does make a big difference. It makes a difference to them, you know, makes them feel yeah. good. And those you're out there watching and everything. And we appreciate real DeFi. So, yeah. and um, don't forget to go to creatacrypto.com and pick up a Creta Crypto t shirt and support us that way too. Grab some clothing. Doesn't have to be a Creta Crypto one. I mean, we may we purposely made a uh, unique hex pulse chain of pulse X ones does not have our logo on it. So if you don't really give a shit about the show, Hey, if you don't want to wear us on your t-shirt, that's totally fine. Although yeah. I, you know, we are making some spanks right now that has Ewoks face ah, on one butt cheek right on, on the yeah. other. Yeah. But um, yeah, pick up some of that merch. I think you guys will really like the designs of the pulse pulse X and hex shirts. Uh, we kind of collaborated on those. So hopefully have um, more to come soon. You know, you got yeah. some ideas, let us know. We'll maybe get them on a shirt. So, yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. We really appreciate you guys here. We will do this every single Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So until next week, and for Crypto Ewok, this has been Broke Boy Crypto right here on the Creed of Crypto podcast.